but before I make my written statement, I'd like to have a candid moment with y'all um, to to try and directly convey to you that this statement has been the hardest thing I've ever written in my life. Uh, you guys have the uh, condensed version, 15 minutes or so, but it took me months and months and months, and I've swam through raw emotions trying to, to get this done. Thank so you. thank you for letting me be here. Oh, absolutely, sir. Thank you. I will begin now. Uh, Honorable Judge Rowe. I am here before you today as a direct result of the horrible crimes that were committed back on November 30th, 2021, the day that my son was murdered. For the longest time, and for reasons I do not care to mention here today, I did not know if I was going to be able to do this. You see, on that day, my life was torn apart, and for a while thereafter, I struggled with dark thoughts and found myself completely lost in a seemingly endless sea of raging emotions with no care as to what happened to me. And grief had consumed me and has squeezed out every bit of joy and happiness in my life. Still, today it's uncertain if I'll find my way back. The events that took place that day have rocked three generations of my family and has altered our future forever. These days, there's not much happiness in the holidays. Birthdays and those milestones days don't carry with them the special feeling they always used to. Life used to flow with some sort of rhythm and balance, and the continuity within our family was evident. There were gatherings, vacations, and fun-filled events. What I feel most would deem your typical family situation. That continuity and all that came with it were lost on the day that my son was murdered. Like a severed electrical line, the flow was no longer there. Instead, we fallen into the darkness. Still in shock and total disbelief over the fact that this actually happened to us. Completely blindsided, we've been carrying on with more questions than answers and left to deal with the deluge of emotions we've never experienced before. One could venture to say that there are no words that can accurately describe the pain that we feel on a daily basis. I have PTSD and struggle most days to even get out of bed. Anxiety, stress, sleepless nights, and uncontrolled emotional outbreak breaks make even the simplest, most normal things difficult. Scattered thoughts, raw emotions, and that uncomfortable elephant in the room feeling I get with everyone I interact with cause substantial uneasiness and affect everything I do. The things I used to find enjoyment in are no longer reliable in that respect and are done to merely have a feeling of something normal. Golfing, bowling, ball games, hunting, fishing, camping, kayaking are just a few of the activities I used to do with Justin that seemingly will never have the same effects on me based solely on the fact that he's not there to do them with me. I've always operated on the premise that if you get the kids into the things that you like to do, that you'll have those things in common forever and will always have a way to spend some quality time together. Even if, even if it's just for a quick nine or an hour on the boards blowing out a few pockets, Father's Day foursomes with my three kids out on the link was something I've been looking forward to for a long time but will never have. This unfair reality is something I will never get over. Day-to-day -day life goes on for so many, but in the clutches of grief and heartache, the difficulties are real and have so many side effects. It almost feels like time slows down and everything around you speeds up. It's been two years already, but feels much like yesterday. I still find myself waiting up for him to get home from work so we can get a few minutes to chat, as it was often the only time we had that chance to. It's unbearable to know that he's never going to walk through that door. Never in a million years did I think that something like this was going to happen to me. Although we all know the unfortunate real possibility that this can happen to anyone, anywhere, anytime, there's absolutely no way you can prepare yourself for this level of pain. It doesn't matter how much you think you've prepared or how strong you are, 
or how big your support network if, is, you have the, you have this level of pain and it's truly debilitating and it takes you out. Having seen news reports and documentaries on tragedies of this nature, I don't feel it uncommon at all to watch in horror and disbelief that something like this could actually happen. And I've done what I believe many others have done, and that's have thoughts of how I might feel or act if something like this ever happened to me. Well, now that it has happened, I can 100% assure you that the worst thoughts or feelings you may have do not hold a candle to how it actually feels. For centuries, man has exploited the, fra the fragile nature of the human being, and over the years have developed many, many ways to inflict pain, torture, and kill. Millions and millions of human beings have met their fates by way of such devices. As we have all learned in school, there is a full spectrum of reasoning behind these perversions. Although throughout history, those reasons have been widely understood, the sheer brutality of senseless violence has never sat well with the human psyche. So we have evolved till now, and in our modern society we have established laws and regulations to essentially protect ourselves from ourselves. However, as is seemingly always the case, there are those, for reasons we may never know, who wish to defy the now widely recognized and agreed upon state of human decency and can you continue to commit such senseless acts of violence. In my opinion, it takes a deeply disturbed individual to leave the compass of basic human decency. The act of taking another human being's life is not only exasperating, but extremely selfish and unjust. I believe that once an individual crosses the boundaries of basic humanism and admittingly maliciously kills another person, that ind individual should meet the same fate. Unfortunately, based on the laws that govern our land, this has been deemed inhumane and is widely frowned upon in modern society. So in lieu of execution, I feel strongly that the individual should never be allowed to walk among his peers again. And this is why I'm going to ask you to lock this son of a bitch up for the rest of his pathetic life. His blatant lack of human decency and disturbing thoughts on life in general do not in any way warrant a second chance. My son doesn't get a second chance and neither should he. This individual has proven by carrying out these heinous and completely unnecessary acts of violence that he should never consider, be considered fit to rejoin a society that despises this exact behavior. His very name should be condemned, recognized only by his cowardly, vile, and malicious defiance of human law. Now with all that being said, I'd like to direct my comments toward this disgusting individual I speak of. He sits across the room from me at this very moment, dressed in orange, emotionless. Although I'm sure he may have a half-baked idea of just what I'd like to do to him, I'm not quite sure he has adequately envisioned the exact nature of this idea. I'd really like an opportunity to physically show him how much pain he has caused me and my family. But in a civilized society, governed by complex laws such as ours, this type of display is not permitted. But you can rest assured, you piece of shit, that baby bird screams would pale in comparison to the screams that you would exude if I were only able to show you. But luckily for you, they won't let me. So I will hope, with every bit of hope I have left, that with every passing thought or memory you have about what you've done, you remember my statement and take time to imagine it happening and recognize it in the worst way possible. I've tried to put myself in your shoes and over and over tried to imagine what could have possibly been so horrible in your life to have caused you to commit these crimes. I actually thought long and hard and can come up with no logical explanation. The fact is, that what you did was reprehensible and completely unnecessary. You see, we use things called words to convey our thoughts, and our concerns, and our opinions. Sometimes those words we share with, or, excuse me, those sometimes those who we share our words with don't hear them or choose to not listen. But this is no reason to throw a tantrum and do the wrong thing. You simply have to speak louder 
and to more people until you get the results you desire. Life is not easy in any sense of the word. It often feels cruel and unfair, but you, what you have obviously overlooked is the fact that life is the most precious gift each and every one of us receive, and you have completely wasted yours. You said you wanted to be remembered as a person who committed the biggest shooting in Michigan history, and this may be true. But I will have it entered on file at this time, on this day, for the world to know forever that Ethan Crumley should be remembered as the biggest coward in, this, in Michigan history, an individual who unfairly preys upon unsuspecting and helpless lives without the courage to meet their same fate, a truly detestable and ignominious excuse of human being. Now my last words for you before I conclude is that I truly hope your new roommates welcome you in properly and show you the kind of treatment you can only get on the inside as it's clearly all you've ever wanted. And, in my, and it is my hope that there is some kind of pain involved. I also think that as you rot away lamenting over your wasted life, you should take time to ponder the fact that all you, though you may have taken four lives, the selfish gesture of organ donation by my son saved at least five lives, thus overshadowing your delusions of grandeur and effectively nullifying all that you feel you've accomplished. Stew in that for a while, and maybe you'll realize that as long as there are good people in the world willing to selflessly give of themselves to help others, evil will never triumph. My final thoughts are directed towards everyone else. It is with every bit of my heart that I offer all who have helped my family over the course of the last couple of years the sincerest thank you. The sheer magnitude of humanitarianism and goodwill that came in from all over the world has been humbling and has gone a long way to showing me there is still good out there. I strongly believe that it resides within each and every one of us and that it is our responsibility as human beings to let our goodness shine onto everyone we interact with, whether we like them or not. Because the way we treat each other, both directly and indirectly, affects the lives of more people than you can imagine. Not to mention, it's simply easier to do. I beg of you all, please be kind to one another and push your energy towards walking the path of the righteous and do your part to help eliminate these types of tragedies. Thank you for listening this morning. I wish you all very best. Thank you, sir. And I know that that wasn't easy for you, so thank you for your statements this morning. They did not fall on deaf ears, and I am very sorry for your loss, sir. Thank, thank you. you. People, you may call the next person that wishes to make a big impact statement. Jill Sobey is next, Justin's mother. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning, ma'am. Good if morning. If you could please state your full name for the record. Yes, Jill Suave. Thank you. You may proceed with your statement this morning. Thank you. Honorable Judge Kwame Rowe, first please allow me to thank you for your time and dedication to this case. I know it's been deeply disturbing and horrific. Thank you also to Karen McDonald and the entire prosecution as well. I am asking you, <clears throat> Your Honor, to please sentence the shooter to life without the possibility of parole on behalf of my son, Justin Schilling. Your Honor, it's almost impossible to find the human words to describe my grief, pain, trauma, and rage. The manner in which my son, Justin, was so cold-heartedly, methodically, executed shows clearly the pure evil and malice of the shooter. For this act alone, Your Honor, he deserves life without parole. No mother should have to put her child in the ground. On the eve of Justin's burial, I had my phone ready to call 911 as I feared that I was having a heart attack. <clears throat> it's only by the grace of God that I am still here with us today. In my letter to you, Your Honor, I have detailed the extent of my trauma as well. 
Justin's siblings, Nathan and Clay, were robbed of much of their youth, their innocence, their joy. Their beloved middle brother, Justin, <laughs> their shared future memories, impossibilities with Justin, holidays, weddings, birthdays. As their mother, I am beyond infuriated for the pain and their suffering. Clay, who was only 15, was hiding in the school that day as well, fearing for his life and worrying about Justin's. Justin's grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, all have suffered an imaginable loss as Justin was and is so very loved and cherished by his entire family. Justin had such an impact on his many beloved friends, teammates, co-workers of all ages, and people in the community. My heart breaks for their pain and trauma as well. Justin was happy, humble, hardworking, grateful, stylish, funny, smart, loving, thoughtful, and empathic. He never complained and always made time to lift others up bringing out the best in everyone who knew and loved him. He didn't deserve to die this way. Justin was a lettered athlete, a top honor student, and lived by the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. He was so excited to graduate and planned on attending Oakland University. We did a tour in the fall of 2021 and we talked about his plans to major in business. He wanted to move out with his friends and even considered getting a real estate license. He was so motivated and focused. His future was so bright and full of possibilities. Justin would have been an amazing father. Children loved him and gravitated toward his big heart. He was such a gentleman and so very loving towards me and all women, never letting me pump my own gas or hold my own door. He will always be my little sweetheart. Justin spent his final moments protecting Keegan and saved six more lives with his gift or organ donation. May his light and legacy live on forever. Now, Your Honor, I would like to share what I would like the shooter to know. You may have ended Justin's life on this plane, but you did not in any way affect his soul. You don't have the power to do that. You may have caused the pain and terror as you intended to do, but you did not destroy us. There is more love and light in this world because of the legacies of Justin Tate, Hannah, and Madison. I don't focus on hating you, but I also don't feel a drop of pity towards you. I don't feel anything towards you. You're nothing to me, you don't even exist. While you rot in jail, we will push on and we will do so many good things in the world, spreading so much love and kindness in honor of our angels. You are facing the consequences of your actions here in this court of law, but you will also face your demons in the afterlife, and there is no escaping that. I pray that you serve as a deterrent and as an example for other lost souls who seek fame by taking innocent lives. You didn't win. You're not famous. It didn't turn out as you had hoped. The media will forget about you. They will move on. I know you're miserable and it's only going to get worse as the reality does set in. But we are only going to get better. More healed, more loved, and more loving towards others. More peaceful and more full of grace. And one last thing I do want you to know if you were that lonely, 
that miserable, that lost, and you really needed a friend. Justin would have been your friend if you had only asked him. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And also, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you for your statements this morning. Again, I know that's not easy.